Hey guys, this is Chesney Hawks here. You are watching My Hammers 11 with the one and only Russ. Yes, everybody, Russ the West Ham Network. Hope you are all safe and well. Hope you're enjoying. Happy international break. West Ham can't ruin our weekends just yet. That's next weekend we play Newcastle. Anyway, as we always try and do during the international break, we try and put lots of uh, interviews, different stuff that we can we can't really do during the during the sort of the season, so to speak. With obviously so many games coming on, and we've got some really good guests coming up, including today. Um, he's currently, well, my heart bleeds for him. He's currently doing pre-season in Abu Dhabi um, <laughs> in about thirty-eight degrees heat. Um, <laughs> let me bring him in. The wonderful. Uh, Jamie Porter, there he is. How you doing, Jamie? You all right? Yeah, good. Thanks. You? Yeah, I'm all right, man. It's uh, yeah, a lot sunnier where you are than in Hornchurch. Yeah, well, it's dark at the moment, so <laughs> oh, of course, it's <laughs> still 28 degrees. Though. Still fucking hot, isn't it? It's still not getting cold, does it? <laughs> yeah, still not get cold. How's pre season going over there, man? Yeah, good, good. Um, we've finished our little T20 comp, we've got a two day friendly starting tomorrow. And then we fly home on Sunday afternoon, I think. Oh. Hope. <laughs> oh. No, I'm really scared. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you, are, you one of these, yeah. are you one of these guys? Are you one of these guys? I mean, who obviously do you not enjoy going, doing all that sort of pre season stuff? You just, are you a home, home man, a home bird? Um, I do enjoy, I enjoy being away, but I think it's obviously changed, as I'm sure you know, like it changes when you have, have children or. Yeah. or like, um, and you know, I've got my fiance at home, and she's toughing it out. So, yeah, I think I spent five days at home in the last kind of six weeks. So, I'm kind of looking forward to getting back and some some normality. <laughs> yeah, although you will have a list of jobs to do, won't you? Is your penance oh, yeah. for, for being be away? Yeah, yeah. Because apparently yeah. you're you, you know you're you you've, you've been away. I've been working. You know what I mean? I get that yeah. with my wife all the time. You know, that's yeah, all right. No, you know, you've been away. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it's a holiday apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Not the fact that you're fucking sweating your ass off, you know, in thirty-eight degree, forty degree heat for pre-season, but they don't think about that. Um, when's the when's the uh, looking forward to the season? Yeah, can't wait. Um, obviously, kind of getting out here and playing competitive games and kind of feeling the ball come out the hand, it gets you a bit excited. So yeah, I think we're what two just over two weeks away from yeah. knots away first game so yeah really excited good do you get do you still get that buzz every pre sort of pre-season looking forward to the new season yeah i think it comes a bit later now because i think you know as i'm getting a bit older i enjoy the little break at the end of the season um and i've probably got better at getting as far away from the game as possible than i used to used to be but yeah the last few weeks the the buzz has definitely come back. Yeah. And not just the buzz coming back for for you, obviously pre-season. The buzz seems to be back at West Ham the last few weeks, mate. It's been it's been really weird until say the last two, three weeks. And it seems to seems the wheel seems to be turning again at the Amers. Well, I never thought I'd say this in my lifetime, but kind of this this part of the season where you get to the European knockout stages seems to be the best time to be a West Ham fan. <laughs> kind of what we have we've had a semi-final a, a win and a what we're into the quarters now so and we seem to be playing really good football in Europe so and I mean the league like I still think you'd, you'd take seventh wouldn't you like yeah we want to play better football and and we want to try and push for the top four but I'd bite your hand off to be like you know to have 40 points there was a time where you were questioning if you were going to get 40 points in the season and to be you know the 40 point mark now over the moon with that yeah, it's always the case, isn't it? You sort of, I remember like, even like in the re- relatively good times we're in now, you still sort of wait to get to 40 and then you could start like yeah. breathe easy a little bit and then see, okay, what can we do? What can we push mm. on and what can we achieve? And, you know, potentially there's, there's, you know, still places to be had, you know, there's, I think, you know, we could have an, a full year of Europe for me. Um, yeah, well, I think. We could be in the Champions League. We could be. <laughs> we have a we good, could be. Yeah, we had we a could good, be. Uh, good couple of months. But um, yeah, I, you know, sixth is definitely realistic, I think, if we play well for the yeah. rest of the season, which yeah. would be brilliant. Yeah. 
Well, I'd even, I mean, it sounds really weird, as you said now, like it's strange thing, talking about it as a West Ham fan. I'd even take the Conference League again. Do you know what I mean? Because I just think it, yeah. uh, it's just great. You know, it's, it's not, it's not, I'm not snobbish about what European competition, I'm, I'm, you know, I think it was great fun last time. And, you know, you play some different sides and, you know, you do get the opportunity to give some of the youngsters a run out as well if you do well in the group stage. Mm-hmm. Although it's different next year, isn't it? We're doing it's not groups; it's like one big league, and so we might not get as much opportunity to uh, to play the youngsters as, as much. But uh, we'll see, man. We see. As you said, we seem to be hitting form at relatively the right time. Um, yeah, which is which is great. And, and people come back from injury. I know it's international break. I know Caduce is pulled out of the internationals, and so is Antonio. But I think that's just them being. I don't mm. think. Or injury, I don't think they know which side they've bred spied. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You're totally, mm. you're totally true. So, obviously, uh, you know, in terms of you, massive West Ham fan, um, where did it start for you, mate? What, why, why pick Claret and Blue? Um, <laughs> it wasn't a choice, I guess. Um, I know that my granddad had me leaving the hospital in a and a West Ham onesie or something like that. Even my sister left the hospital <laughs> some West Ham on it. So, you know, to be fair, I've done the same with my daughter. I think it's just, yeah. you know, you, you're you kind of born into it, aren't you? You know, growing up, um, you know, like around Ilford, Barkingside area, you, it is your local team. Yeah. Well, it's either them or Orient. So, you know which yeah. one I'm choosing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Although, no, like, no, to be I, fair, I still respect Orient. And yeah, I, I used to do the Orient. Oh, it yeah. was all right. It was my West second Ham team. Fans, second team, aren't they? Them and and Dagenham and Redbridge. Yeah, it, it, but, was, um, it was like I remember when I was like under under sixteen. It was like a, a tenner for a season ticket. So you do mm. West Ham one week and Orient the other week. And I was at Loughton, so I could jump on the the central line. It was my first sort of a, not a way day, but first time I could get you know on the tube. Yeah. And it was yeah, I didn't mind the O's. It was all right. Ten pound a ticket that would do me for the season. Yeah. Lovely stuff, but. You're right. You're born into it, aren't you? Really. My yeah. daughter was the same. My daughter's due date was the um, playoff final against Blackpool, and um, <laughs> I had a really good ticket, mm. so I was allowed. So yeah, so I, I went obviously. Um, but then uh, she was born a few days later, mm. and I've got a picture of her in the uh, in the playoff trophy. So a bit like you know Harry yeah. Potter. She was she was scarred oh, at an early brilliant. age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Aren't we all? <laughs> Aren't we all, unfortunately, man? Yeah. Do you remember your first game? I do. I was thinking about this last night, actually. I, it's a toss-up between two. So I remember two. I can't remember which one was first. So I remember I went to an under-21s game at um, Upton Park when I was real young. That was when you know, Joe Cole, Lampard. Don't know. I don't know if Rio would have been playing in that. But... You know, that, that crop. Um, so, I remember all the talk was Joe Cole. Yeah. Um, then, so, remember that. I also remember, I want to say it was Julian Dix's last game at Upton Park. So, it's a, it's either one or the other. I couldn't tell you which one came first. Because um, I, I, my literal, my vague memory of it is um, literally from the exact same view from the um, Dr. Martin stand or whatever yeah. it was called back then, that side. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I couldn't tell you which game comes first. Kets on changing his kept on changing his mind with the sponsors, didn't it? In terms of what the name yeah. of the, that fucking stand was, the Alpha, yeah. or <laughs> or until one of the sponsors ended up going bust, as happened well, quite often. Um, that was that uh, XL Airways, wasn't it? They were the XL Alpari. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, Alpari FX Trading that went under. Yeah. Um, because it was like what I called the patch era when they all had to put patches mm. on their shirt. <laughs> when someone had, oh shit, they've gone yeah. now. Yeah, Exo Airways, they put a big banner in there on top of the uh, old East stand. So when you're flying over to Stansted, it was like advertising. It was like, yeah, yeah that's well, right. They should yeah. maybe spent the money on the actual infrastructure of the company rather than. I reckon um, I've still got yeah. that shirt somewhere with the pat, the blue patch on it, like. Um, but the worst one was when they I'm... when they put the patch, the first patch they did, if I remember, was basically they took the same shirt 
and almost took the patch off, off the back and put it on the front. And then everyone yeah. was sweat apart from this bit here. And oh, it was the leather was... claret patch. Yeah, they did it first. <laughs> then they swapped it for the um, the black and white number, didn't they? They just put the number yeah. on the front. Yeah, they, they squeezed weeks. SBO bet yeah. into like, it's like you'd put it into paint and just like dragged it <laughs> yeah. as a square. It was like, oh my God. <laughs> I liked it when they put the, when they had the sort of, you know, the numbers on there. Like I remember David Di Michele. He had he was yeah the Italian team. striker, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah, Colton Cole put him in his mat in his Hammers eleven. Uh, remember that was a long time ago. He yeah. said he was he was crucial to his development at West Ham. But yeah, no, it's um. And as you said, once you're in, you're in. As you, how old's your daughter? Has your daughter been to the been to another stadium yet? No, she's probably I reckon two years off. Um, so she's two and a bit. Yeah, uh, Christmas Eve born. So. Yeah, two and three months. So yeah, that's that's rough. Um, that is rough. That is yeah. rough. I was praying for the missus to hold on for another twenty four <laughs> hours. Christmas Day would have been better. Yeah, you might, you might get one lot of presents then, isn't it? Rather than get two lots of presents because uh, it wasn't. That. I just think, like at my age, there aren't many. Like I'm kind of at that age now where there aren't many days of the year where you really enjoy going out and having a drink. But Christmas <laughs> Eve, I've always felt is like perfect. Go sit in a pub all day and everyone oh kind of yeah like, so i've lost that now we used to do that at least 18 we years to, oh yeah well the, oh, the 18th birthday party would be quite cool though we um yeah, yeah we used to get down out and it was uh yeah the the last post in out and was like everyone if you was at uni or whatever everyone would come and transcend back to that pub on christmas eve mm. you see people you haven't seen for like a whole two three years yeah but uh yeah yeah the, those are those days are well gone for me now i'm telling you Oh, there's no way I'll be allowed out to do an 11 11 session anymore yeah. now, but yeah, same. <laughs> it's sad, isn't it? It is sad. Um, yeah. Obviously, you know, being a sportsman, obviously, I mean, it's it's maybe slightly obviously the majority of your the games will be appearing sort of towards the end of the season, you know, when obviously when the cricket season properly, you know, obviously it starts in a couple of weeks' time, but you know, you, you can sort of see the winter games, so to speak, while it's still, you know, mm. um. Well, it's still, you know, the, the cricket season, the off season. Is it difficult when you're playing and, you know, West Ham are playing at the same time? Um, not really, no, because um, quite good. I'll make sure it's on in the dressing room. And even if we're <laughs> in the field, like, I'll sneak off for a couple of overs um, here and there, especially if the ball's not doing much. If the batters are piling them on, I'll come off for two or three overs and <laughs> yeah. get in front of the TV, check the score and... See what's happening, and it must be also you know. And obviously, we've spoken to a lot of other sportsmen, um, and obviously, you you guys can appreciate because I think as fans, as as non sports playing fans, you know, we have aspiration. Oh, I should be doing this, and da, 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 da. and obviously, as a sporting person, as as a profession, you can obviously appreciate maybe a different perspective of the, of the game. Um, I get that with. Like a lot of golfers, they sort of, you know, sort of understand, like, obviously, what it takes to be a professional footballer um, in terms of being a professional sportsman. Um, and obviously, you know, I can imagine that's the same with you as well um, when it comes to, because yeah. we always say, oh, they're unfit. <laughs> but you know, that's not the case, mm. you know. So, yeah, no, I, I think, yeah, like my attitude towards sport in West Ham's definitely changed a lot since kind of making a career out of sport myself because um, mm. you understand kind of how hard it is and and the thing I've enjoyed kind of in Moyes' second stint is you can see even when we're playing crowd so Oh, that's it. Wait, some I mute you. Wait, uh, I think you. I think someone called you, JB. I think someone's called you. So it's like it's got muted and unmuted. Uh, yeah, I can't hear you now. Uh, let me see. Uh, you can't unmute because they chose to mute themselves. You haven't, you haven't muted yourself. Oh yeah. There we go. Can you, I can hear you now. One yeah. sec. My headphones have. Uh... No, I can hear you then. It's all right. One sec. Let me just dis- reconnect my headphones. Um, no worries, mate. No worries. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's got, got completely yeah, down. Well, I'm it. There we go. He's down. back. He's back. Don't worry. Are they working? I can hear you. 
Did you meet? Yeah, I can. I'll take my phones out. They've uh, they vanished. <laughs> Who needs technology? Fucking hell, you know what I mean? It's like it's not. Yeah. Like, it's not like you're on the other side of the world or anything, Jamie. Don't worry, man. No, yeah, they the, um, <laughs> honestly like trying to communicate with the UK from this country is impossible. It's weird, isn't it? Do you know what They're I am? I I always the the best the best place I ever got internet was we went to we went to Lapland in Finland and I was getting like three hundred mega I was like streaming like West Ham Arsenal on like on yeah. my phone it, it was mental and I was like but then I can't I get I can't make a phone call in my house because the signal is so shit yeah. it's like yeah, makes mine's, no sense. Yeah, mine's terrible. Uh, don't matter. Uh, don't matter. Um, so, so yes, you, you were you were saying obviously, uh, you know, in terms of Moisey's second stint, even though we were playing, we haven't been playing. You know, you could see, and then you, then you cut out. Yeah, like the intensity is there. The guys are like you can see people want to play for him, and then want yeah. to play for the club. And you know when, you know when when guys like Jared Bowen, I'd say, is our best player, consistently mm-hmm. our best player. When he's signing silly long contracts like that's to me, that's a very good sign. So, you know, I can take us playing the way we are for the results we're getting. And also, like, the last probably since well, the last four or five years, it seemed like there's a real good vibe around the club. Like, players seem pretty happy and all the kind of, I know it's content or whatever, the social media stuff that comes out, but it shows kind of like there seems to be a real good feel around the club. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I, I obviously, obviously, you know, w- working at the club, I, I see that because um, obviously I was there during the COVID years and I don't remember a side being so together um, just from a team spirit perspective. I mean, little things like they would do uh, they would do like about half an hour, about half, what, if it's three o'clock kickoff, about half one, they would do a lap of the pitch. They'd all walk around together, no mobile phones, just all joshing each other, you know, chatting. And I was like, that's really nice because it seemed that they were together. And obviously no one saw that because it was COVID, so there's no fuck there. Um, and then they stopped doing it, actually. Um, they stopped doing it when um, when Deck was, was was skipper. I don't know if it was intentional or if it was, you know, we just did. And we weren't playing very well. And then as soon as Mark came back in as sporting director, we started to do it again and we started to perform again. Um, it's a bizarre thing, but you, you're right. I'm, there is a di- yeah. I'm a big believer that Mark Noble is the and has been the, the glue at that place. Mm. Like I was lucky enough to I bumped into him in Vegas two years ago. Yeah, um, on a mate's birthday, and he was with his wife. Is it? I think her name is it Carly. Um, yes. They were sat at the bar at the win, and come over and said hello. And it was my mate's thirtieth, and you know all West Ham fans. They sat with and drunk with us for at least three hours. Like, yeah. and he just loved talking about West Ham. You could tell that, like, genuine, like, the pride of his life, like, was all about playing for West Ham. Like, everything, yeah. like, talking about it. Just, you could see how happy he was just to talk about playing for West Ham. Oh, and definitely, that, man. It's nice for like a West Ham fan to, to feel. Because I think if you're a West Ham fan and you don't idolize Mark Noble, then. You're not really a West Ham fan, are you? <laughs> like, no, I get, you know, I get like what you no mean. One's represented the club better than that man. Not in the modern, e- not in the modern era, for sure. Obviously, you know, for people yeah. of a certain generation, like yourself and me, and and maybe people up, you know, we, I've, I'd never, I wasn't around during the Billy Bonds era. I never saw Trevor Brook in play. I, I saw Julian Dix play several, you know, for two spells, yeah. and 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 someone like Mark Noble to have played seventeen, eighteen years. That's. Hmm that will never be replicated in modern football now. Um, you know, that doesn't happen anymore. You don't get these guys, but I totally agree. And, and I mean, obviously one of Mark's big things now is the Academy. Um, and obviously, and I, and I, and I do some stuff at the, at the 21 games and the 18 games at Rush Green and Mark's there every game, every yeah. game sitting there, you know, it's like a little bot. I sit at the back and there's Kenny and Kenny Bandit and there's Mark or Mark and then Mark Robson or maybe Moisey or Billy McKinley's there as well. And, and, and all he's doing is, and I can, I can just imagine what he was like as a teammate. 
because literally all he's doing is ribbing because next to you have the guys who aren't playing sitting next to us, whether it's the 21s or the 18s. And he's literally constantly ribbing them, constantly yeah. taking the piss out of them. And I can imagine he was exactly the same as at the first team. And that's what yeah. you want. And that's what you want. Like, Especially you know, for like the youngsters, because I think yeah. of like the, the best periods I've been a part of at Essex, like, and our most successful years, a lot of like the senior players would always get into the youngsters and it was their way of saying to the youngsters, you're just as much part of this dressing room as, yeah. as you know, the guy that's played 200 games. Mm. And I think that that goes a long way because that's the quickest way to make someone feel comfortable, I think. Yeah. And I've put them on a level. Yeah, and it's not, and it's not, you know, and, and again, you know, we've had lots of ex pros on, and they talk about actually some of them started with Mark when Mark was 60, you know, and they saw what a gobby little shit he was then, and, you know, and, and, but you need that. You need that. I think, you know, particularly now we get a situation with particularly the, the youngsters, and they don't have the, the YTS scheme. They don't clean the boots. They don't sort of, mm. they just come in at a level already. And I think having that sort of, it's not, and it's it's not bullying. It's just it's it's team morale. It's it's it's, it's banter, yeah. and, and and that's what's and that's what makes them makes them men really. I mean, they're playing with their same, you know, the the, the kids, the Callum Marshalls of this world, and and Gideon and Freddie Potts and people like that. They're playing with the same age group all the way up to twenty one, and then mm. they're shoved into the first team if if Moisey picks them. Yeah, that's a massive gap for any youngster to. And as you said, if they're not. They don't. They're not used to that sort of environment. It's going to be really daunting for them as well. So uh, it's it's really tough. Yeah. No. Really tough. No. Anyway, we talk about Mark Noble, and we talk about uh, obviously uh, some of the great players that we've played with. Uh, obviously, play rather. As I said, this is this is my hammers eleven. So the idea is we get everyone on the channel. The only people who haven't given me a hammers eleven was Harry Redknapp, Ian Bishop. And Nigel Rea Coker, randomly. Um, everyone else is giving me a, a hammer's limit. So the idea is, from a fan's perspective, it's the play. You can pick anyone. It doesn't have to be the best. It's your, maybe your cult heroes, whatever. The Psycho 11, whatever. But the all, all the thing is, they have to be... Um, you have to be alive to a scene and play. So as I said, I, I couldn't put Bobby Moore in. I couldn't put Billy Bonds in. I could put in Gary Breen and Radoslav Kovac for example. Yeah. <laughs> Although actually Radislav is coming on the channel soon. Um, so I probably should have <laughs> him off just yet. Um, so that's what we do. That's what we do. So um, we'll try and keep 442 if we can. If not, don't worry, I can we can move it around, but that's the idea just because that's the only graphic I've got. Um, so, who's in goal for the Porter 11? Who is between the sticks? Very important position. Right. This is more of a like, just love the guy. I'll, love go, I'll go check his lot. Oh, Shaq, do yeah. you know what? One of the nicest men in football he is. Yeah, I can imagine that. Such a nice, such a dude, such a lovely guy. Um, yeah, and I mean, currently in the, he lives in East Coast America. Yeah, there's all this stuff for ESPN, but yeah. Mm. Do, do you know what? My my I, my Shaq Hislop story, when I, was at, when I lived in Loughton, he would come in. This is just how football's changed. He would come in and do his Friday big shop at Saveways. And yeah. you would see him because he was so tall, his head was over the top of all the all the all the, all the, all the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But such a dude, man, isn't he? I, I love Shaka. Yeah. Lovely man. He's just so much fun. And he's just so and he still loves West Ham. Still loves it. It's great, man. It's great to see. Mm. Yes, Shaka's in. Okay, who's gonna who's who's your next player? Who's the next one? Uh, so right back, Glenn Johnson. Glenn That's Johnson, it. yeah. So part of that sort of that 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 uh, academy. That was that was the that was the part of the time where we we basically said anyone who's half decent. Oh, where are you? there are you. Anyone who's half decent, you go. Oh, he's really good. How long's he going for? His, how long's he here before he fucks off? Yeah. Because he was. I mean, I think he only played like. He oh. he played the season we got relegated. Yep. And, and then, then he went. Did he play in the championship and go? I think he, did, I think he played he, a little bit. Did he go the same time as Defoe? Because Defoe went in the January window that year, didn't he? 
Yeah, because he wanted to go, didn't he? And I mean, I mean, the thing was, we yeah, we was, we was in that period where we had to let these guys go, didn't we? Um, we, yeah. it was yeah, and he was. I mean, he cost the same as Joe Cole cost Chelsea, I think, which was mental when you think about it. Absolutely yeah. mental. But yeah, he was like he was like one of those sort of like very much the modern day right back, weren't he? Like you know, you got to think, yeah. you know. Like Carl Walker, like now, yeah, and those exactly. Players. Like comparing to Carl Walker, like exactly that was him. Forward, like, kind of had two feet in the final third as well. Could be he scored that amazing volley, didn't he? From was it a left footed volley from like the corner of the ball? It wasn't for us, but was it for Liverpool? Yeah. Or? I think it was Liverpool. He scored that goal, yeah. yeah. Top man, yeah, nice guy. Okay, Glenn Johnson's in, nice. Who's next? Uh, gotta be James Collins. Oh, Ginger Pele. God bless yeah. him. God bless him. One, one of those players, and, and we've, we've had a few of them who who I, I always say, you know, aren't from around these parts, but very much, well, he still fucking lives here. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> but he's just very much still part of, he's, he just gets West Ham. I mean, when you see... Part of the furniture at the club, really, isn't he? Like, he's, exactly. he's still involved now and like, yeah, I thought he's, he's always representing the club well and he's kind of an adopted hammer, isn't he? But once you see, once you, the fact is he goes to away games, do you know what I mean? And, and like, you know, you see him in the, in the in the stands at away games and stuff like that. That to yeah. me shows a different level of acceptance of West of being accepted by West Ham. And yeah, yeah. always be involved there. He obviously he does, he does a podcast only with Chris and stuff. Now the official yeah. club one, which is good. Um, they, they did nick my idea about Miami's 11, but anyway, just saying, um, just saying, Chris, um, the, uh, yeah, yeah, the court hearings in the post, but anyway, um, so Ginger Pele, I like this Ginger Pele, Glenn Johnson, who's next? Some great names so far, Jamie. Um, who do I have? Someone else in mind, with Collins, who do I, I can't remember now. Have I had mine? I'm gonna go with. Rio Ferdinand. He's the best centre back that's ever played for the club, even if it wasn't for long. Yeah, well, I mean, what he brought as well. You know, the fact is, you know, him he came, went for big money, and that made a massive impact at West Ham, didn't it? Really, in terms of developing the ground as well. Uh, you know, the famous what was the Alpari Dr. Martins? It was called the Rio Stand for a long time, wasn't it? Because most of the money went there, really. Yeah. Joe Cole really wanted the pay for yeah. it. Yeah, we spent a lot of money. It was a lot of money spent that summer, wasn't it? Uh, a lot of good players left the club, but yeah, yeah Rio, top man, top man as well. you know. And also, you got his brother as well. You got Anton, so you got that sort of family yeah. relationship there as well. So yeah, nice. I'm liking Hislop, Rio, Ginge, Johnson. Who's next? Uh, we already spoke about him, like Julian Dix. Ah, oh, to the Terminator. I had, um, I used to get, so I think it was, I was in primary school and my PE top was a Julian Dix top, obviously, <laughs> Dix on the top and didn't really know what it was about, so. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And the fact, I love Julian, he, he scored the first ever goal I saw. So that's always in the, and when I told him that, he went, but I scored two that day, Russ. I know you scored two that day, but you scored, but more importantly, you scored the first one I can remember. Um, but yeah, probably wouldn't get much game time now in today's world, in today's VAR world. But you know, he could he could orchestrate. He that's what I used to love about Julian Dix. You know, and and the difference. You know, he, he could get the whole crowd up on their feet by mm. one tackle, and not many left backs can do that. In no. honesty, top man. All right, I'm liking this. I tell you, it's a bit of a tough centre. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put Collins next to next to next to uh, Collins next to Julian, because I would not be a right winger if that happened. Ferdinand, yeah, you can get there. Right, let's go to midfield. Let's go to midfield. Who are you, who are you starting with in midfield then, Jamie? Um, probably making everyone's but Declan Rice. Yeah, can't, no. he's, you can't. No, he's the best holding midfielder I've ever seen at the club. Um, he's a great player. I mean, he was great, and and I think, I think personally, I think he was a better club uh, team captain than club captain personally, because I don't think he, I think he was still a bit young to take the captain. Yeah. You know, to take over from Mark Noble was a massive thing. 
When he was and a club captain, it was brilliant. We, he, he probably had it in mind that he was going to go. You know, I think he represented the club as well as he could have. And I don't yep. blame him for leaving. I think, you know, he had to do it. Um, but yeah, you know, he probably, I think he'd, two years out, he probably would have known that he was eventually going to move on. Yeah. And I, and I think I think you know that and I think you know there's 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 there is quite you know the likes of Rio, Glenn. I imagine there'd be one or two similar ones. There comes a point of time of this you know where you know he wants to be playing Champions League. He wants to be doing yeah. these things, and it's his mm. profession. He's you know it's a job, you know. And I think people very rarely are like Mark Noble and will stay there forever. You know, yeah. in all honesty. Um, I said you never get. I don't think you'll ever get that again. Okay, put Decky in the middle. Who's he gonna? Who's gonna be next? So I'm gonna go. We've put Mark Noble next to him. Yeah, I think yeah. Dream partnership. Uh, yeah, and you know, you can sit here and speak about Mark Noble all day, can you? Like, oh, easy. No, represented the club as well as he has, and yeah, just always loved. Even at the end, I loved watching him play because he was the ultimate team man when he come on the pitch. It just you know, happy to take a card, kick people, do what he has to do to to get the boys over the line. Yeah. And that's what I love. It. And, you know, again, sort of old school footballer. And I think that's why that, you know, he sort of worked at West Ham. And, you know, very rarely do you have a player who's your club captain, who's your who's, who's a boy who's played the whole his whole career at your club. And he's a West, and he's a fan as well. It's a really unusual thing to have, and I think yeah. now we're sort of realising the impact he did have because I don't think really we've got a good captain at West Ham at the moment, to be honest. Um, and I think you, you you miss that just that together, you know, that sort of connection between the playing yeah. staff and the and the fans. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. So, Benny, maybe maybe Freddie Potts will come back. He's having a great time at Wickham at the moment. And I think he'd do a very good job in that midfield when he when he uh, comes back. Um, right, we've got Rice and Noble in the middle. Nice start. Okay, who's going to be... We've we got two wingers. Who's going to be the first winger then? Uh, so, I'm going to have Joe Cole on the right. Top man. Yeah. What great. can we say about I Joe Cole? Also loved that he came back. Um, you know, he wasn't... You know, he was pretty much done or nearly done when he came back so we didn't oh see yeah it. but but you know like uh, i think and he still talks really highly of west ham as well like he still talks like a west ham oh yeah on tv which i love so and yeah, yeah i mean in his day great player he's brilliant i mean we had, when we um we had him on the channel a few a uh, couple of months ago and couldn't get him off couldn't yeah. get him off talking about west ham and you're thinking you know, he was just so like open, and you know, it was just really, really lovely guy. Really lovely guy. Um, right, this is nice. This is a real. This is this midfield is a real West Ham midfield. It, you know, Noble, Rice, Joe Cole. Who's going to finish it? Um, so I'm going to have oh, Jared Bone on the left. Jared Bone. Oh, he's yeah. given it one of the greatest goals, the greatest goal of my lifetime. Uh, <laughs> Absolute dude, didn't he? One of the best songs ever. In a while, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think he's he's an unbelievable player, and and yeah, like he's he's another one like an adopted hammer, I'd say, like a bit like James Collins, like yes, great shout, great shout. And I suppose when your when your father-in-law is Danny Dyer, you're sort of stuck, yeah. aren't you? Really? <laughs> I signed it eight-year contract or whatever it was. Yeah, exactly. That weren't a coincidence. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he has given us a great song. And I, I love players with a decent song. You know, yeah. they, they've got to have a you have a certain level of cult status when you've got a song. You know, like yeah. Christian Daly, Payet, you know, Di Canio. You know, these guys have all got a good song, you know, and so, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. uh, so definitely with Bowen. Right up front, who's who's starting? So I'm gonna play like it's like a like a Lionel Messi role, like that. Do what you want. It's got there's nice. only one who can play that, and there, Dimitri Payet. Yeah, what a dude. A little bit sour about how it all ended, but he's geez, some of the stuff he could do was mind blowing. Oh, amazing player, wasn't he? Amazing player. He was uh, 
I mean, we're fortunate enough now to have some amazing players, but there was a period, I think, in the middle when he left that we sort of lacked that sort of guile player. Who We had like Felipe Anderson and people, but it wasn't Payet. And um, yeah, an absolute uh, gem of a man. Currently plying his trade at Vasco da Gama in Brazil at the moment. So, Quite the, quite the fall from grace, really, wasn't it? Like, he had a great couple of years after leaving us and then kind of fell off the face of the earth. Well, I, I think I think Pyatt was the first person in many, 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 many years where we actually got someone in their prime. We always yeah. seem to get people, and a lot of these guys you picked, they're either at one, the book end of their careers, so they're at the, at the beginning of their careers, or we get someone like Teddy Sheringham, who's at the end of his career. Still a good player, but at the end. Very rarely do we get people in their in their pomp. A um, bit different now, I think. I think Pi- I think you know the Paquettas and the Caduceus and Bowen are in their pop now. But Pyatt yeah. was one of them, mate, and he was um, he mm. was he was special. He was a very special player, really good mm. player. And who's going to finish? Who's going to finish the Porter eleven? So I found this one tough up top because it's a toss up. <laughs> it's a toss up between De Cano and Tevez. Oh, uh, I mean Tevez scored one of the most important free kicks I've ever seen, but can't not go to Canyo, can you? This, this well, you, you know, this, this is, this is a definitely anti Moyes side, isn't it? I mean, you've got, <laughs> you've got <laughs> the Canyo, Payet, Cole, Tev, you know, like you can have Tevez on the bench as well. But yeah, I mean, mm. you talk about somebody who still loves the club. I mean, I went to a, an ex-player night of his a few, a uh, couple of months ago and um, yeah, you can tell you can't you can't fake it. You can't fake it when yeah. someone's um, just gets the club. And there's a few players like that, you know. Uh, De Canio's, you know, you have got James Collins. You're right. Uh, like randomly, someone like um, Sebastian Schemmel from the mid nineties. He, he's got like a he's got a restaurant in Luxembourg called Upton Park and, and <laughs> stuff like that, you know. And but De Canio, yeah, such a dude, such a dude. And maybe, maybe. We draw Roma in the semi-finals, and obviously the Lazio connection, Di Canio as well. Yeah, who knows? Britain's... I'll tell you, we're up top actually, Marlon Harewood. Marlon Harewood, what a great bloke! I met him a couple of times at the games, and he's, he's such a nice guy. And also, you can tell he loves loves West Ham as well. Yeah, there's a group of them. I mean, obviously, we have the club ambassadors, and as you, you know, if you're in the posh seats, they come around and do all the, all the stuff. And um, yeah, you know, they all have Marlon, Colton, Zavon, Jimmy Walker, all that eight, like Matt Jarvis, like the youngsters. Then you have the older players, like you know, the Monkers, and even older players like Brian Deers and Mark Wards and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And you can tell they all love. I mean, like we've had over a hundred ex players in the channel, and I haven't had one ex player go. Oh, I hated my time at West Ham. Yeah. Either they played like three or four games. It was a mm-hmm. loan spell. They talk about you know we had Henry Lansbury on, who was like a loan spell in the. In the 2000s, yeah, the 2010s. Yeah. yeah. He went in gold, didn't he, a couple of times? Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, he loved that. it. Yeah, that was when we were in the championship season. We got yeah. promoted. Yeah. Under Big Sam, yeah. And he, he, I mean, it was one of those bits where he, where Sam wouldn't put, where, where we have always two goalkeepers on the bench, he would put no goalkeepers on the bench and, yeah. and throw on, you know Henry Lansbury in the in the cent in the in the goalkeeper's positions, but nah, man, it's uh, yeah. But they all love it. They all love the club because it's a special club, and we all know that. I know we we're West Ham fans, and we're a bit biased, but it is. So you know, De Canio slash Marlon Harewood. We'll see who we're playing. If we're playing against yeah. a real tough centre off, we'll put Marlon. And if not, De Canio, yeah. you know, quite a progressive one. Nice, nice, nice team, Jamie. I love it, man. Love it, geezer. Love it, geezer. Listen, man, it's been an absolute um, privilege and a pleasure, man, uh, to chat to you. It's been great fun. And uh, and I was about to say, you've still got some of your evening yet left, kind of. Bit of Netflix. Straight to Netflix, yeah. <laughs> I quite like The Gentleman. Have you, watched, you must have watched that one yet. Yeah. The I've Guy finished, Ritchie one. I finished that in the five days I was at home, actually. So. <laughs> yeah. It's one of... <laughs> It's one of the only um, 
series that me and my wife have actually managed to watch together. Because usually I'll watch one episode, we watch one together, I'll come down and do an interview, I'll come up and she's watched yeah. two or three, and it's like, well, fuck it, there's no point in it, is there? Yes. Yeah, I quite like I was, that. I was jet lagged for like five days at home, so I was just watched, <laughs> I was the only one up, I was, yeah, got through it quickly. <laughs> Uh, very good anyway man and obviously it's got West Ham's Ray Winston in it as well you know friend of the channel yeah. so it all yeah. works it all works man listen Jake uh, thanks man it's been an absolute privilege and uh, and I wish you all the best uh, not not so away a couple of weeks time and then obviously uh, back, back to the home ground back to Essex get people down there watching you seeing that old seeing that old right arm that's the left arm that's the right arm uh, <laughs> working by then but yeah that's it warm it up by then son we'll be all right <laughs> keys man have a great rest of the uh, last few days of the pre-season yeah. and uh, we'll catch up when you uh, when you're back in blighty man brilliant all right thanks for having me on mate pleasure man i'll kick you out so don't worry man right. cheers man lovely cheers. stuff cheers geese jamie jay porter essex cricketer um lovely bloke as well keep an eye on the channel we've got lots more coming up lots more really fun guests coming up and until next time take care stay safe stay warm stay humble keep the faith come on you bloody irons on it like sonic see you later potato